Well, I know we're going to have at least two or three more snows. Uh, we can still uh, celebrate spring. I think the words are coming. We all come from love, and unto love do we return. We all come from love, and unto love do we return. Like a stream. our minds and hearts are expanding to new horizons and exhaling peace our wish for peace for the world our wish for consideration for all And feeling that in your heart. So not just thinking it, but how can you feel that and bring that feeling into the uh, picture you're creating in your mind. Breathing in expansion. Breathing out our wish for the well-being of all.
at some point trying to measure our breath so that maybe they're three or four counts long. So we're lengthening that breath. Maximizing that stillness. Inviting that blue sky mind to come into our thoughts, that blue sky heart uh, to come into our center of compassion. Transitioning from the busyness of our daily lives to our yoga practice. Where we try to bring that awareness into the breath and that dance that we do when we uh, perform yoga. Uh, <clears throat> listening for the breath and tying that to the movement. So that the uh, yoga practice becomes a sort of moving meditation. Uh, namaskar and welcome everybody to class today. So the class today is a little about the uh, invigorating vitality that springs uh, brings with it. Um, I think I've, I've seen hyacinths and tulips and um, the crocuses blooming and the birds singing and with the spring comes that transformation in nature comes this uh, kind of involuntary transformation to ourselves, um, which I think everyone is looking forward to what spring will bring with it, that promise of spring and the newness of things and how we all long for that, that newness. Uh, because all winter, we've been trying to focus on positivity uh, we've been trying to focus on walking with nature and redeveloping our relationship with uh, nature and um, supporting each other. And so one of the ways that we can keep inspired and keep on that sunny side of the street is by still fighting, even though we have this social distancing, how can we still support others? How can we still be in that bright uh, light of um, bringing that light to somebody else? Um, listening to that, uh, that inner one and working on developing a relationship with that inner self. You know, how can we do that? And it's through supporting others, stepping outside our, our little comfortable boxes of ego and uh, going outside our comfort zone with uh, safety <laughs> to find a way to, uh, you know, maybe connect with others, um, doing acts of, of kindness, sowing those seeds of kindness in uh, new ways and looking for when we create our uh, to-do list of things that we're gonna do today. Hmm, what kindnesses are we going to sow? What seeds of kindness can we sow in our lives in each day for supporting others? And others might be people, uh, they might be plants, 
Uh, they may be birds. I know uh, the Blue Jay in the neighborhood came in our bush today and was uh, requesting his breakfast of peanuts. <laughs> um, but there's always a multitude of ways. We just need to, again, expand our horizons to find those uh, new ways of spreading kindness to others. Does anybody else have any wishes for spring? That my tomato plants grow. <laughs> that would be sweet. I have 30 <laughs> little tomato plants that are growing right now. Oh, I, uh, this year, I think last Best tomato month. plants ever. <laughs> <laughs> I have in my kitchen, I have a snapdragon, a volunteer snapdragon growing in one of my plants. And I did not know that that was possible to grow wildflowers inside. <laughs> and that was completely um, spontaneous. I don't even know how that happened. And, um, so I'm going to try to grow a few wildflowers inside my house this year. <laughs> oh, tomatoes, growing tomatoes already. You know, uh, when, when people grow their own tomatoes or their own food, um, there's a, when there's a special relationship with your food, I believe that it really changes the quality of that food energetically. Um, and I think there's a lot to that. And we don't have the instruments that can measure that these days, but someday uh, someone will invent that and know that when there's, there's a food that you grow with love and caring and nurturing and you're building this relationship with your food, that the food is different. <laughs> The food is uh, cosmically more energized than if it comes from a massive field where there's millions of them, you know, and they don't get the same loving care that our, our gardens get. So I think there's something to that. So growing things can be such a uh, a trying and wonderful experience brings joy to many. So today our class is about spring. So we'll roll over our knees coming into tabletop. And then from tabletop, we'll lift those knees and walk the hands back to the feet and come into a standing position with our hands to our heart. Well, I walk over here and turn on my music. Hopefully, oh yeah, here it comes. <laughs> so rooting our feet into the uh, earth, bringing our hands to the heart, making those uh, connections with the earth and closing our eyes and focusing on that breath, that flow of that subterranean river flow the breath. Oh, this image is coming into my mind now of uh, those films that you see uh, of uh, Antarctica with all the penguins uh, coming together. And sometimes they come pretty tightly together. And that's the picture I have of this class right now, coming together like uh, penguins in the cold, keeping each other warm, supporting each other. Perhaps keeping each other out of the wind. Breathing in, expanding our horizons and breathing, breathing out that uh, wish uh, for consideration in the world. So today we're gonna to start with the, the swallows, which will be coming back soon. So we'll take both arms to uh, one side 
and exhaling the hands down. And then in the center, we switch and inhale the hands up, sending those swallows down with the exhale breath, slowly moving to the other side and inhaling them up. And so we'll repeat this flow of exhaling down, inhaling as, <laughs> as my watch is uh, dinging for some unknown reason. Inhaling up, exhaling down. What? So bringing that flow of the hands and the breath together, shifting. Inhaling up one more time. And there's a gentleness with this pose. You know, bring that sense of gentleness into our being. Bring that tenderness of spirit. And then as we come to this side for the last time, we're gonna bring our uh, right arm down and our left arm up diagonally in front. Inhaling it up to that blue sky, switching to the side, lowering that arm behind. Inhaling it up to the sky. And just imagine that that blue sky is energizing your hand and the whole body as we turn to the side and exhale that arm down. And then we'll do that one more time. Coming up in front, turning to the side, and um, beginning our descent. And then we'll come up with the other arm, elevating the other arm, bringing in that blue sky, and exhaling it behind. Inhaling up, capturing that blue sky mind, exhaling down. Feeling that stretch in the shoulder as we raise the arm up, shift in the waist, and exhale down. So then we'll come into the front with both arms doing doubles. Inhaling the arms and sailing around the shoulders. Inhaling up, exhaling down, keeping that connection with the breath. And as they start to come up this time, we'll reverse them. And so sometimes there's a little catch there as we reverse the movement and change it a little bit. So we'll come around one more time and bring the hands to the heart. Once more, breathe in. Breathing out. Yoga is like uh, pressing your reset button. Establishing a connection with the breath, with the heart, with the body. So since uh, we're now officially in spring, uh, the next uh, exercise we'll do, and I'll demonstrate it first. I know we've all done it before, inhaling up three times. So it's uh, front, open, up, and then bending the knees and exhaling down. So we'll be doing uh, sniff in, sniff in, sniff in, and out. So here we go. Like we're orchestrating spring. Here it comes. And exhale up, open, up, and down, forward, open, up, down, forward, open, 
up and down, forward, open, up and down. Just one more time. Coming back to the center once again. Coming home. Breathing in. Breathing out. Giving the breath uh, a chance to recalibrate itself. So doing that breath um, invigorates. Enthuses all the cells in the body. So then we'll inhale the hands overhead and gliding to the uh, right or the left. I think it's your left. Coming into the moon, half moon pose. Breathing in and breathing out and smiling through the challenges of the poses. So that's how we develop evenness of mind coming into the center and then gliding to the other side. And if you like, you can look down at the earth, bonding with mother earth, giving a little twist to the neck inhaling to the center and then we're going to dive down so spreading the wings to the sides coming down to the feet and you can hook the big toes if you don't have your socks on and squeeze that big toe and energizes the brain meridian holding over ourselves holding in towards our divine essence and then inhale out to the sides and up. Once again, exhaling. Inhaling and coming into a gentle back bend. You know, maybe gently pulling the head towards the back to make sure your chin isn't floating forwards. Exhaling to the center. And then here we're gonna whirl the arms all the way around and down. Let them fly behind you, fly up in front and then come back home. Kind of blessing the body, blessing the mind, blessing the heart with each pose. And then we'll start this one over, coming up towards the sky and gliding to the side. Maybe looking down at Mother Earth. Inhaling and coming up towards our center and gliding to the other side. Inhaling to the center. And then we're going to dive, spreading the arms out to the sides, diving down towards our feet. Remembering that the beauty in nature is part of the journey. Being filled with that wonder and awe of nature. Inhaling back up. Exhaling through the feet. Inhaling the arms up and coming into a gentle back bend. Coming back to our center. And this is where we whirl the arms around. So whirling those arms 
Coming all the way down to the earth. Coming back up and settling into a home base. Breathing in, breathing out. So the uh, standing moon pose that we just did, did um, I think that puts in like four of the movements of the spine and now we're gonna do the last two. And so inhaling at the wisdom center. And this is the smile twist, making that double smile with both hands. Breathing in wisdom, breathing out wisdom. Breathing in wisdom and breathing out. So pretty soon we're gonna start turning. So you can turn to your left, inhaling wisdom and smiling to the left. Sending those smiles out, sending that joy out, coming back to the center, recharging and exhaling to the other side, sending those smiles out. Inhaling to the wisdom center. Incoming, sending smiles. Coming to the center again. Inhaling, exhaling. So we'll do this a uh, few more times. Inhaling joy, sending that joy and laughter everywhere. Everyone is a deserving recipient to all living beings. Coming into the center, sending them out this way. Coming back to the center and we'll do it one more time. Sending those smiles out. Coming back to the center. Coming back to that heart space. Breathing in, breathing out. And then we're going to take our arms to the side in a T formation and send the arms a little bit back so they're past this frontal plane. They're coming into the posterior frame. Um, I'll get it in a minute. Posterior part of our being, the back side, coming to the front, coming to the back side, and the front, coming to the back side. So we're just uh, floating those wings back and forth. I think a lots of times during the days we're winging it. So bringing that into our being, clearing the air, winging it, and then coming back to heart. So then we're gonna start with warrior one. So we'll come forward with our left foot and take our uh, right foot behind us and find a, a nice position that will sustain us. That will be a good foundation. And then whenever you are ready and sinking those feet uh, into the floor, Inhaling and sweeping those arms up and exhaling into that front knee. Breathing in, breathing out. Being that uh, warrior spirit that uh, sows kindness wherever you go. Sinking into that front knee. Exhaling, bring the leg in front straight, the arms back to the heart. Breathing in, breathing out, recharging our batteries again. So once again, we'll, on that inhale breath, sweep those arms up and over the head. 
Exhale into that front leg. Spreading those fingers so that uh, they're all conduits to that blue sky up above. Imagining that that blue sky is just pouring through those fingers. Filling you with that promise of spring. Inhaling and straightening that front leg, exhaling and bringing the hands back home. Breathing in, breathing out, and then we're gonna sweep again. Inhale, exhale. Letting yourself uh, shine. Kind of like the hummingbird, you know, showing all your true colors. Being that radiant one. Inhaling, straightening the front leg. Exhaling, bringing the hands down and back to the heart. Breathing in, uh, breathing out, and then we're going to sweep up one more time, and we're going to move into um, warrior one, and then drop those hands down so there's a sunbeam right in front of you. You're going to pull that sunbeam into the heart, into the mind, imagining yourself as a a flaming being, you know, filled with light from your head to your toes, being one of those radiant ones and pushing away all those little clouds of worry, those little clouds of troubles. And we're going to send those down to the ground, one hand on either side of the foot. Breathing in and out as we're uh, folded over. And then pressing those feet into the earth, inhaling back up and bringing the hands back to the heart. So we'll do that one one more time where we'll inhale those arms and wings slowly up. Exhale into that front knee. Finding that freedom that comes from the warrior spirit. Bringing those hands, dropping them down, grabbing that sunbeam, pulling it into our being and filling it with light. Pressing into those feet anchoring into the earth and yet still being filled with light, pushing away those clouds of worry, clouds of trouble and sending them down to the earth. One hand on either side of the foot. And then we're gonna pop those hands a little bit ahead of the foot so that between the hands and the foot, there's a little tripod there because we're going to lift that back leg up. Breathing as we're feeling that strength of that one base leg, bending the knee so that it points down towards the ground, bending that knee so it points towards the opposite wall, returning the knee to the earth, Sending it out to the wall once again. A little bit of a hip opener here. Down to the earth. And back to the wall. And then we're going to drop that foot down right next to its partner. Walking the hands back towards the feet. Inhaling back up. And I've lost my arms again. Oh, here they are. Coming back into Tadasana, Mountain Pose once again.
standing, closing your eyes, and imagining that we're all the penguins together in a circle once again, supporting each other. keeping ourselves uh, sheltered from the wind. So I think it was Shiva who said that uh, liberation was not possible. Self-realization was not possible without good company. So here we're standing here in mountain pose, in penguin pose, all uh, together. Breathing in, breathing out. And then we're going to get our minds ready for uh, practicing the sequence again. So coming forward with the other foot, with your right foot, sending your left foot backwards, finding that position that sustains your body the best, how far apart the legs are, making sure those feet are anchoring into the earth. Coming up with those arms on the inhale, coming down into the knee on the exhale. Breathing in, breathing out. And like the spiritual warrior, sowing those seeds of kindness everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. And on the inhale, straightening that front leg, the lead leg, coming down with wings, bringing the hands into the heart. Breathing in, breathing out. Once again, inhaling, sweeping the wings out and up, exhaling into that front knee, feeling where that front knee is. And you might even take a glance at it, just making sure that that knee is growing straight up from the ankle. So we don't want it hyperextended over the side. We want a straight right angle. And here we are sowing seeds once again. Being that uh, spiritual warrior that helps to bring that promise of spring. How can we participate in that process of transition, transformation, exhaling of the front leg, bringing the hands together. Once again, sweeping the wings up. Exhaling in that body. Being uh, out in the world with that clear blue sky that we have today. Breathing in, breathing out, feeling that connection with the breath. Once more, straighten that leg, bringing the wings down, inhaling into the heart. And sweeping out again. So this time we're going to uh, grab the sunbeam. So there it is in front of you, pulling it into the heart, into the mind. Imagining ourselves as a um, blaze of light, not too unlike a star. And pushing out those clouds, releasing, surrendering those clouds of doubt, of darkness, those things that drive us crazy. Bringing them down to the ground, letting them go. 
So the fingers are lined up initially with the toes. As we breathe, fold it, uh, fold it down into ourselves. Then pressing the feet into the earth because we're getting ready to come up, inhaling and slowly coming up, bringing the hands back into a version of standing mountain. And then we're gonna repeat that pose one more time. Sweeping the wings out. Coming down into that knee, kind of sinking into it a little bit lower. And then there's that sunbeam. So grabbing that, bringing that light into the body, into the heart. Filling our being with that uh, brilliance, with that radiance. Yes, we can be that. And pushing out any negativity. Taking it down, down, down. Into the earth. So lining up our fingers and toes first. As we bend over for uh, a few breaths. And then we're gonna pop our hands above and build that tripod. Come on to that uh, front leg, lifting that back leg. Just breathing into this uh, elevated, <laughs> elevated asana. And then we're gonna bend that knee towards the earth, but we're keeping it up. Bending the knee towards the opposite wall. Bending it towards the earth. Bending the knee towards the wall again. Coming towards the earth. And then one last time towards the wall. And then we'll unfold that leg, bringing that foot down right next to its neighbor. Walking the hands in towards the feet, keeping the feet at uh, hip width, inhaling those arms up and bringing them down to the heart. Again, connecting with the breath. Recalibrating the breath so you might feel it uh, running away from you a little bit after that series. So settling into the breath. what becomes a, a tad bit more even. So next we'll be revisiting a uh, balance pose. So the balance pose for today will be the eagle which is a little different than the little chickadee that I see right there. So we'll either, I, I don't know where your wall is that you practice in and it could be a doorway. So we'll put on our reverse backup lights and uh, come into that wall. And then we're gonna step a little bit away from the wall because in this pose, we're gonna come down. So as we come down, we're gonna come into the wall a little bit. So you wanna be a little bit away from the wall uh, to begin the pose. So then we'll slide uh, down into the wall. We're gonna walk the feet a little bit away. We're not going into a deep squat here. It's gonna be a high squat. So then we'll get our 
feet a little bit away from the body, our, our spine, our back into the wall, merging with the wall. So then we're gonna get ready for this shift in the body. So we're gonna take our left, left leg and put it over our right knee. So getting ready for that shift that's gonna happen. Sweeping that leg over. And so with the eagle, with the eagle arms, the arms are the opposite of what the legs are. So if your left leg is on top, you're gonna to wanna to have the other arm on the bottom. So the hands can either be back to back, or you can try to twist them around and settle into your eagle pose. Breathing in. So this is a challenging pose, so make sure that you're a little bit high and not in too low of a squat. I'm just going to hold this for a second or two in case you're challenging yourself too much. And then we'll unfurl the legs, unfurl the arms, coming all the way up into a standing position and all the way down. So then we're going to shake out the legs and the arms and hands. And then come back into the wall. So we're not in the wall yet, we're just maybe an inch or two away. And then as we squat down and walk the feet out, we're gonna come directly into the wall. So then we're gonna to wanna to change our feet. So you're gonna want one in the center, kind of, that's gonna be your main focus. And then cross the other foot over and doing the opposite twist with the arms. Breathing in, breathing out. So we're being eagles today. So listening to the wind, listening to that voice of the wind. Sometimes when you're in the mountains, the wind has a very distinctive voice. So can you recollect? Can you remember that? Of the wind blowing through the pines. And then unfurling the legs, unfurling the arms. Coming all the way to center, and once again, shaking out the uh, hands and feet. And I think we'll just come down to the mat. So coming down with our soles of the feet together. Once again, with your hands either on top of the feet or underneath. So whichever version of turtle you would like to express. But we're rounding the back. Rounding the back and I, I think turtles listen to the wind also. So as you're in uh, Turtle pose, which is kind of a meditative pose. We're forward folding, it calms the mind. Listening to that uh, voice of the wind, especially when you're in the, uh, in the mountains. Remembering the uh, chitter chatter of some of the tufted ear squirrels there. The uh, call of the ever-present crows, which are everywhere. And sometimes there's an occasional magpie.
coming into that flow of the breath, the flow of that subterranean river. That gives you a, a little glimpse into that internal uh, world that sometimes we don't get to uh, see or even catch a glimpse of because our mind is going, 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 going. So how to relax the mind. How to retrain the mind. It's like training a puppy uh, to be calm. So then we'll sit upright and bring the feet a little bit closer to uh, being cross-legged. We'll bring one leg out, doesn't matter which one, because we're going to do both. And we're going to bring that leg up, kind of with that bent knee, and then with the hands underneath it, extending that leg forward, stretching those hamstring muscles and then inhaling it in, bringing it back in. Kind of uh, letting the back grow, letting the back be nice and long and strong, even though sometimes it'll want to uh, collapse a little bit with these hamstring stretches. And then we're going to exhale it out in front of us one more time with that foot inhaling in and then we're going to lean to the side with the opposite forearm pull this leg around and we're actually pulling that leg behind us so we have uh, one leg in front bent and another leg behind Stretching those quad muscles, the adductor muscles, which are um, on the inside of the thigh. Breathing into that and just be present with those muscles in the body. And then bringing that leg around the front. So now the other leg is saying me too. So we're going to bring it up front and center and then swing it out. And so as we swing it out, we square that foot or make it bright. Inhaling it in. Growing that spine tall. It's just like you have a string pull up. Exhaling. brightening that foot. So when we have that square foot, that's when the uh, real stretching happens, whether you're standing or seated with those calf muscles. And sweeping it out one more time. Doesn't matter how high it is. And then we're pulling it in. And this time, as we pull it in, we're going to put that forearm, the opposite forearm, to the side so we can pull that leg behind us. Feeling that stretch here. into those uh, muscles, being present with those muscles, being present with a smile. So in yoga, we uh, strive to be uh, flexible. So it's not only in the physical body, but flexible uh, mentally, emotionally, intellectually and uh, spiritually. So being flexible, I think starts with the body, 
then it creeps into the mind. So then we'll bring our legs out in front. Once again, making our feet bright. Taking our hands and interlacing them, we're going into corn grinder. So in corn grinder, we bring those interlaced hands out to the side and come around the front. Exhaling down the other side and to the back. Crossing the body, exhaling. Inhaling as we bring them back. Coming way out, exhaling. Coming back to the other side and then crossing the body. And we'll go around the world one more time. And as we come toward the navel, we'll change directions and go the other way. Grind in that corn. Coming back, leaning to the side, leaning forward, stretching but not straining. Om Shanti. Coming around to the other side. Always keeping the mind uh, facing the sun to the sunny side of the street. I think in our nature walks, we probably do that a lot. Coming to the center. And then we're going to come into, I'm gonna turn my body a little bit because we're gonna come into tabletop. So with tabletop, we'll have the knees shoulder width apart. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> the hands shoulder width apart. <laughs> the, uh, the knees are hip width apart. And uh, before we go down, we're going to bring that <clears throat> right knee up to hit that right elbow or toward the right elbow, sweeping that leg out. Inhale. Exhaling out, inhaling toward the elbow, exhaling out, feeling that wave that comes up and down the back. And then we'll bring that knee home and we're going to do the same thing with the other knee. And so if your, your wrists are getting tired, you can always come up with a fist on your wrist as we bring the other leg forward, sending it back, forward. So we're gonna do it several breaths, inhaling in, exhaling out. And one more time. And then bringing that knee down to the mat. And then we're going to come all the way down to Cobra. So bringing those arms down, bringing that tummy down. Coming down with your forehead into the mat. So nice to uh, lie on Mother Earth. Just relaxing into the earth. Inhaling, widening the shoulders, lifting the hands off the mat, coming into flying cobra first. The neck is nice and long and looking down as we raise the uh, thorax as much as we can and then exhaling slowly, slowly down. Breathing in, breathing out. Inhaling, 
Bringing the head up with the neck nice and long. So we're still looking down and flying. Raising that lower back. And then exhaling down. So how to be as flexible as the snake. Oh my goodness, they have so many vertebrae. And then as we come up the third time, coming up and using your forearms or hands. So the neck is still nice and long and the cobras are looking straight ahead. And exhaling and coming down step by step. Turning your head to the side or into the earth. Taking a complete cycle of breath. Mm. And then inviting your body to uh, come up again into that cobra pose. <clears throat> Excuse me, pressing that pelvis into the earth. <clears throat> and slowly coming down. Well, the frogs are getting me today. Having one more cycle of yogic breathing and then coming up again. Spreading that chest, spreading your sail. Exhaling and coming down slowly. Floating down to the ground. And then placing the arms ahead of you. I think I'll scoot down my mat a little bit more. So we're getting ready for the airplane series. So on the next in, inhale, we're going to lift our arms and legs. And once again, we're flying. Lifting the arms and legs and breathing. Breathing a couple of cycles of breath while we're here. And slowly coming back. Sliding the arms down so that they're in a uh, T position. And then once again on the next inhale, We'll inhale the arms and legs up. Breathing in, breathing out. So the next day is nice and long in this series. So we're always looking down. And then slowly coming down onto the tarmac. So while we're breathing in and out again, we will slide the hands down next to the hips. And on the next uh, inhalation, we'll raise the arms and hands again. Remembering that just a little will do doesn't really matter how high. We're all flying above the earth anyway. I'm sure the traffic controller is watching us. Breathing in, connecting with the breath, and then exhaling and slowly coming down.
Breathing in, breathing out. And then we're gonna bend both of our knees. Because on this next one, you're either going to uh, grab your legs or hover the hands uh, above the earth uh, with the palms down. So uh, you might wanna start hovering first and seeing if the, the digits will get to your legs. They may or may not. So this one starts with the inhale breath, hovering the arms first. And then you can see if you can grab one leg or both legs. And uh, if you can't, that's, that's fine. All of us have arms and legs that are different sizes. Breathing in, breathing out, and thinking about how can I be like the, the plane? How can I be, uh, be able to withdraw from my attachments to outcomes? How can I withdraw uh, my desire to control things? And then exhaling the feet down, exhaling the hands up underneath your forehead. So withdrawing the mind from its attachments is no easy task. Sometimes it can only be done by tricking the mind, giving it something else to focus on. So then we're gonna put um, one arm ahead of us and uh, we're going to, uh, with the other hand, push ourselves over onto our backs which involves a certain amount of scooching back onto the mat. Ancient Sanskrit word, scooching. And just resting <clears throat> on your back on Mother Earth. Breathing in, breathing out. So we can have both hands <clears throat> up over the head, bending both knees and putting the soles of the feet into the earth. We're gonna first bring the uh, right hand up to the sky. And as we exhale, the uh, glutes are coming up. So we're coming up into bridge and we're turning in the direction of the arm that, that has come down. So the right arm is down. We're looking to the right as we lift up into bridge pose. Exhaling down and as we exhale the glutes down, the hand is rising and coming over the head. Then we're exhaling on the other side and the left arm is coming up. As it starts to go down, the hips are raising again, and we're twisting the neck towards the left. And breathing a couple times, a couple cycles of breath as we connect with the breath and the body in this direction. And then as we exhale, the glutes come down and the arm goes back over the head. Breathing in, breathing out. And then on the next inhale, we bring the hands up to the sky, exhaling them down to the ground, and the glutes are up in the air. So breathing a couple of times while uh, we're in full bridge, A 
hoping that this bridge supports us well in uh, tolerating diversity, making a difference in our communities. And then as we exhale those loops down, the arms come up and over the head once again. So we'll do this series one more time, inhaling the right hand up. And as we do that, the glutes are coming up and exhaling it down. As the right arm comes down, we look over our right shoulder into the world. And then rolling the head back to center, we're gonna exhale the hips down and the arm goes back over the head. Breathing in and out. Now on the next breath, we'll inhale the left arm down. And as that arm begins to come towards the floor, the hips come up and the head turns to the left side. And then turns towards the center. The arm comes up over the head and the hips go down. And then one more time, the arms will come, both the arms come up, the hips come up, the arms go down to the floor. And this time we're gonna try raising our left foot up and just holding it there for a breath or two and then bringing it down and putting the other foot up. And bringing this foot down and exhaling the hips down to the floor, and then bringing both bent knees up towards our chest, bringing our arms right in between the legs and draping them around the legs. And we're going to wobble from side to side. Gliding from side to side in happy baby pose. Rolling out the back. And while we're in happy baby pose, we're gonna do one more thing. So we're gonna bring this left leg, which is bent, and uh, put our left hand around it. The left hand is going right over the uh, sole of that foot. And we're bending it kind of into our armpit or beyond. And the right leg is going to go down. So we are stretching these uh, adductor muscles that are here on the inside of this foot. Oh, leg. I have a word salad going on today. And we can slowly. Um, Rock that a little bit. Stretching those upper thigh muscles. And then we're gonna bring that right leg back up. And we're gonna do the same thing, bringing the right arm on the inside. And so that hand is coming right around that arch. The uh, left leg is gonna go down to the ground while we stretch these muscles on this side. So then we're gonna bring the left leg up and we're gonna do happy baby one more time. And then we're gonna do that series one more time. So rocking uh, back and forth. Putting that left hand across the arch of the left foot and we're kind of maintaining that right angle with that left leg stretching these, uh, well, a lot of muscles around here. Inhaling and just being with that stretch. It's a lot of work to be as flexible as grass. 
And then we'll bring that uh, floor bound foot up. And we're gonna do the same thing to that foot. So we're gonna put the right hand on the arch of that right leg. The left leg is going down. Bending that knee. Maybe pulling this foot just a little tiny bit towards um, the body with that knee bent. And then we'll release that foot and bring both those feet, um, mm, the soles of the feet into the earth. So the knees are bent. And then we're gonna roll to the side a little bit, push ourselves up so that we're on our forearms. So being on our forearms, we're gonna bring our legs right up to the ceiling. And we're gonna do that snow shuffle again down. And then bring them back up. Snow shuffle them down, not all the way to the ground, maybe uh, five o'clock. And then up towards 12 or one. And then we'll bring them both down together to five. Bring them slowly up. And then we'll do one leg at a time, bring one leg down to five. And slowly bringing it up to probably one bringing the other foot down to five and up. And so we're gonna slice them like scissors that way. Exhaling one foot down, the other foot up. And then bringing both feet down and bringing the head down. So as we bring the uh, head down, we want to roll it from side to side. And then we're going to roll uh, both knees to the side and come up for a very short uh, yoga massage. So in yoga massage, which is, um, a uh, neurolymphatic massage. So it's not so much a muscle massage as it is supporting your immune system, uh, supporting your neuro pathways and nerve fibers, bringing the hands over the eyes. Allowing that energy and vitality to sink into the eye sockets, sink into the brain. And then raking, we're going to rake our scalp today instead of raking the yard. Raking all the way up to the top and down behind. So breathing into the top, exhaling as we go down. And we're breathing into the forehead. Imagining the breath going into the skin and around the eyebrows. So I'm pinching the eyebrows. It's a pinching movement and then floating. And then under the eyes, all those bags are going to miraculously disappear. <laughs> And then bringing the hands to the sideburns and towards the nose and down. So in the face, we have all these sinuses, other points coming down and then massaging the mustache from the center out, from the bottom of the chin up. And then we're going to take those thumbs and go right into the um, underside of the jaw, you know, where you can feel those lymph nodes moving and working. If you have a, 
a virus or a cold or anything upper respiratory. So helping that lymph to uh, stay healthy. And then crossing the Adam's apple. So there's some lymph that comes down the neck and behind the neck. And then, so the limp goes right down the neck and then it goes right across into the armpit. So we have a necklace of lymph nodes under here that um, kind of jump into action if there's anything being compromised in the chest. So massaging those from back to front. So uh, the lymph moves through uh, gross body movements. So it's hard to get it moving sometimes. And then coming around to the shoulder, down the arm three times. God bless those joints. Going around the elbow, coming down to the wrist, coming down to the back of the hand and the fingers. And then we'll unscrew each finger. So many bones in the hands, bones and muscles. And then we'll get started on the other shoulder. So we'll circle around this shoulder, giving it some TLC, waking up those nerve fibers and you know, just letting the body know that we care. You know, when the muscles feel this and the nerve fibers feel uh, just the gentle touch of the hand is like, oh, and unscrewing each finger on this hand. And some people spend a lot of time on the, on the hands. And then we're gonna come up one hand over the shoulder, kind of rubbing the top of the shoulder. The other one's coming around the sides and into the back a little bit and then we'll bring them both over head and do the opposite movement so hard to reach the back and coming down the sides and maybe i like to do a little bit of knuckling and pounding the back up a little bit gently Tons. And then coming into the thoracic cavity where all those organs reside. And we wanna make sure that they're fine. You know, maybe giving a little thump to the thymus and the heart. A little tap. And coming down to uh, maybe a little bit around the navel and pushing that area in and folding over those fingers. pulling those uh, muscles out to the side. And then we're gonna plant the hand in there with the fingers pointing inward and folding over. Again, hopefully getting those uh, intestines and those organs massaged up, coming into the crease of the hip, coming down, circling the knee, the ankle, and just sliding the fingers off the uh, foot, coming up to the other uh, hip crease. And there's another necklace in here of lymph nodes and they guard and protect all those lower body organs. So we wanna get that lymph going, supporting the immune system, coming three times down the thighs, around the knees, down the calves to the ankle, and maybe around the top of the foot and the lower part of the foot. And then coming down to the ground for a deep relaxation. Coming down to the ground and uh, closing the eyes. Relaxing into the earth.
I wanted to actually read the quote that I sent down today before I Our quest, our earth walk, is to look within, to know who we are, to see that we are connected to all things. that there is no separation. It is only in the mind. Babanam Kabalam. Love is everywhere.
I wish you all a blue sky mind and a blue sky heart day. Namaskar. Thank you so much for coming. Namaskar.